In the world of archaeology, Egypt is a treasure trove of ancient artifacts and structures that provide insights into the lives and cultures of people from thousands of years ago. However, every now and then, a discovery is made that shakes the very foundation of what we know about ancient Egypt. And this is exactly what has happened with the latest discovery in Egypt. A stone treasure chest has been unearthed, and it has led experts to believe that an untouched royal tomb could be close by. Aside from this major discovery, We'll also be talking about some of the best incredible finds in recent years in Egypt in this video. From an acropolis containing 802 previously unknown tombs dating back around 4,000 years, to the lost labyrinth of Egypt, which was previously thought to be a myth but has now been proven to be real. We'll also be discussing the Mastaba Kaper, an ancient Egyptian scribe and priest, and the famous bust of Nefertiti, one of ancient Egypt's most admired and imitated images. So without further ado, join us as we delve deeper into this exciting yet unnerving discovery that has sent shockwaves through the archaeological community. The Stone Treasure Chest in Egypt Scientists have made a fascinating discovery in Egypt, unearthing a stone chest from 3,500 years ago that has been hidden for centuries above the renowned mortuary temple of Hatshepsut in the Deir el-Bahari site. The find has led experts to believe that an untouched royal tomb could be close by. Led by Professor Andrzej Nowinski from the Warsaw University's Institute of Archaeology, the excavation team discovered the stone chest, which is about 40 centimeters long and had been perfectly camouflaged to look like an ordinary stone block. Upon closer inspection, the chest was found to contain several packages wrapped in linen canvas, one of which held the skeleton of a sacrificial goose and its egg while another contained what was most likely an Ibis's egg in a wooden box. Next to the stone chest, the team also discovered a folded bundle covered in four layers of linen canvas and containing a wooden box in the shape of a chapel made from faience, which contained the name of Pharaoh Tutmos II. Professor Nowinski believes that the discovery of the royal deposit indicates that either a temple was established in the king's name or the king's tomb is nearby. Given the symbolism of the objects found and their connection to Tutmos II, it is likely that the deposit was made in his name. Tutmos II was the husband of the famous queen and his half-sister Hatshepsut, who would later crown herself pharaoh and become one of the most well-known rulers of ancient Egypt. Tutmos was overshadowed by his wife during his reign and died at the age of just 16 in 1479 BC. The stone chest discovery took place in March 2019, and excavation work resumed in October 2019. So far, the team has not found the entrance to the royal tomb, but Professor Nowinski remains optimistic that they are close to uncovering an untouched royal tomb. While the discovery of the stone chest is exciting, the archaeologists have yet to find the entrance to the royal tomb. Nevertheless, Professor Nowinski remains optimistic that they are close to uncovering an untouched royal tomb. The Dair el-Bahari site has been the focus of Polish archaeologists for almost 60 years, with the first mission led by Professor Kazmierz Mikulowski in 1961, who sought to document and preserve the mortuary temple of Hatshepsut. The 800 Egyptian Tombs An extraordinary discovery has been made in the desert near the village of Lisht in Egypt, where an necropolis an ancient cemetery has been found to contain a mass of 802 previously unknown tombs dating back around 4,000 years. The site, believed to have been the Middle Kingdom capital of Ichtawi, is one of the largest corpuses of Middle Kingdom tombs in the country. Despite being largely looted before the recent expedition, the tombs still offer valuable insights into the lives of the people who once lived there and reveal that the underground mortuary system was likely to have housed at least 4,000 individuals in the afterlife. The Middle Kingdom period, spanning from roughly 2030 to 1650 BC, was marked by flourishing art and culture, and the Lish tombs provide further evidence of this. Previous excavations conducted by the Metropolitan Museum of Art have focused on mapping the two pyramids built for the kings Amenemhat I and Senusret I, as well as the surrounding royal tombs. The latest discovery offers a great understanding of the lives of the people beyond the royal family. The work began in 2014 when evidence of looting pits was noticed in high-resolution satellite images. From 2009 to 2013, the dark pockmarks multiplied in the images, but it was unclear where the holes led. 
in collaboration with the Egyptian Ministry of Antiquities, the University of Alabama Birmingham began work on the ground, carefully documenting the tombs and assembling a database for the region. Although looters had emptied most of the tombs by the time of the recent work, artifacts such as pottery shards, fragments of wall murals, human remains, and the tomb structures themselves offer valuable information about the people who lived in the capital. The Lost Labyrinth of Egypt For centuries, the Lost Labyrinth of Egypt was considered to be nothing more than a myth, a legendary structure that was believed to have been lost to the sands of time. However, recent discoveries have revealed that this labyrinth was, in fact, a very real and very important structure, one that could hold the key to understanding the history of mankind. The labyrinth is located near the Pyramid of Hawara, which was built by Amenemhat III and was one of the most visited sites in the ancient world. It was described by Herodotus as having over 3,000 rooms, which were filled with incredible hieroglyphs and paintings. According to Herodotus and other ancient texts, the labyrinth was an extraordinary underground complex that held secrets about unknown civilizations in history, great empires, and rulers that lived on the planet before history as we know it began. In the 17th century, a German Jesuit scholar called Athanasius Kircher created the first pictorial reproduction of the labyrinth, just as Herodotus described it. Kircher's depiction of the labyrinth includes 12 courts covered in gates, with six on the north side and six on the south, joining on one another. There are two kinds of chambers, one below the ground and the other above these, 3,000 in number, of each kind, 1,500. The upper set of chambers was seen by Kircher, but the chambers underground were only heard about. In 2008, a group of researchers from Belgium and Egypt arrived to investigate the enigmatic underground complex. With the aid of ground-penetrating technology, which was used to study the sand in hopes of finding and solving the mystery behind the mysterious underground complex, the Belgian-Egyptian expedition was able to confirm the presence of the underground temple not far from the pyramid of Amenemhat III. Without a doubt, the expedition led by Petre stumbled upon one of the most incredible discoveries in the history of Egypt, and they did not even need to excavate in order to confirm the finding. But in 2008, archaeologists working on the Mataha expedition made a stunning find below the sands, revealing the remains of what is believed to be the lost labyrinth. The results of the expedition were published in 2008 in the scientific journal of the ENRIAG, and the results of the research were exchanged in a public letter at the University of Ghent, which media from Belgium attended. The discovery of the labyrinth was a groundbreaking moment in the history of archaeology and has opened up new avenues of exploration into the history of mankind. The Wooden Priest Deep in the heart of the Saqqara necropolis, a team of archaeologists uncovered a hidden gem. They discovered the Mastaba, the tomb, of Kaper, an ancient Egyptian scribe and priest who lived during the late 4th dynasty and early 5th dynasty around 2500 BCE. Despite not being among the highest ranks, Kaper had left behind a legacy that would be remembered for centuries to come. As the archaeologists dug through the ancient tomb, they uncovered a wooden statue that would shock them with its realism. The statue, standing at 112 centimeters, 3.67 feet tall, depicted Caper walking with a staff. His peaceful face, with its lifelike eyes made of rock crystal and small copper plates, almost seemed to come to life. It was a work of art that would leave anyone in awe. But who is Caper? He held the titles of Lector Priest and Army Scribe of the King and may have been involved in military campaigns in the southern Levant. However, little else was known about his life. The discovery of his mastaba shed light on his existence, and the stunning statue was a testament to his status and the incredible skill of ancient Egyptian craftsmen. In the same mastaba, a wooden statue of a woman was also found, believed to be Caper's wife. Together, the statue stood as a reminder of the rich history and culture of the ancient Egyptians. Today, the statue of Caper can be found in the Cairo Egyptian Museum where visitors can marvel at its exceptional craftsmanship and lifelike realism. Caper may not have been among the highest ranks, but his legacy has lived on through his beautifully crafted statue. It is a symbol of the remarkable skill and artistry that existed in ancient Egypt and a testament to the wonders that can still be uncovered in the hidden corners of our world. The Bust of Nefertiti In ancient Egypt, during the reign of Pharaoh Akhenaten, a new style of monotheistic religion was established known as Atenism. 
The figure of Nefertiti played a significant role during this era, but her story was shrouded in mystery. While it was believed that Nefertiti had died or changed her name during her husband's rule, a limestone quarry inscription found at Dyer Abinus revealed that she was actually still alive and healthy in the 16th year of Akhenaten's reign. After her husband's death, it was rumored that Nefertiti briefly ruled as a monarch in her own right, but her story took a fascinating turn in the 20th century. In 1912, the German Oriental Company discovered the famous bust of Nefertiti in Amarna, along with other incomplete busts at the studio of the artist Tutmos. The bust, standing at 45 centimeters tall, was nearly symmetrical, but the left eye was missing its inlay, which was present in the right eye. The right eye's pupil was made of implanted quartz, painted black, and sealed with beeswax. At the time of its discovery, there was no quartz to depict the pupil of the left eye, as there was in the other eye. Despite a thorough search and a reward of 1,000 pounds for any information about its location, nothing was found. Some believed the quartz iris had fallen out, while others thought the bust was left incomplete on purpose. The damage to the ears also added to the mystery surrounding the bust. The bust quickly became one of ancient Egypt's most admired and imitated images, cementing Nefertiti's status as one of antiquity's most beautiful women. However, controversy soon surrounded the bust. Although it was relocated to Berlin in 1913, the remainder of the Amarna collection was shown in 1914, but the bust was kept hidden at Borchardt's request. Egyptian officials requested the bust repatriation to Egypt, threatening to prohibit German digs in Egypt unless the statue was returned in 1925. Egypt even offered to swap other treasures for the bust in 1929, but Germany refused. The controversy over the bust continues to this day. While some believe that it should be repatriated to Egypt, others argue that it should remain in Germany, where it has been displayed for nearly a century. Regardless of where it ends up, the bust of Nefertiti will always be a fascinating historical artifact that tells the story of one of ancient Egypt's most enigmatic figures. Thank you for watching this video till the end. Do not forget to subscribe to the channel, hit the like button, and share this video.